Hey everybody, and welcome to another deep dive. Mm -hmm. Today we're uh, we're doing something a little different, mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of you are really gonna love this one. Yeah, we are gonna be taking a look at a real estate listing. Oh wow! For a luxury home in Carmel, Indiana. Nice. Now, yeah, you might be thinking, I'm not looking to move right now. Why do I care about this? Well, stick with us, right? Because we're going to go beyond just looking at the square footage and the price. I like it. We're going to talk about how language is used to sell a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. And really yeah. what makes a house a home. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> so the property that we are looking at today is 14116 Rawling Place in Carmel, Indiana. Okay. So uh, right off the bat, mm -hmm. this listing is giving us, you know, like a vibe. Yeah. They're talking about high ceilings, an abundance of natural light, and an inviting tone. Right. Now- that's doing a lot more than just describing the physical features, right? Mm. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's about setting the scene, you know? Mm. You walk into a place, and if it's got high ceilings and lots of natural light, yeah. it does have a different feel than, you know, a dark basement apartment. Right. Exactly. So, you know, I think they're going for this feeling of grandeur and openness. Yeah, and I think it really sets the stage because they're trying to sell a luxury home. Exactly. It's okay. got to feel like it's a luxury home as soon as you like read the description, you it's, know. Yeah, you got to feel like you're stepping into something special. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then we move into the living room and they're kind of giving us Yeah. like this kind of contradictory information. Uh, you see it's spacious, it's perfect for gathering. Yeah. But then they're also emphasizing the fireplace for coziness. Right. So how can it be both of those things at the same time? Well, I think what they're trying to do is highlight that it's flexible. Yeah. You can have a big party there. Yeah. You can have a Super Bowl party. You could have like a holiday party. But then when it's just you and your family, you can cozy up by the fire. Exactly. So it's really appealing to, you know, those different needs and desires. Yeah, like different occasions. Different occasions, yeah. for sure. So then we move into the kitchen. Yeah, this is always my favorite part. Oh, yeah. This is the heart of the home, right? The heart of the home. And they're calling this one a chef's dream. Ooh. Okay. Stainless steel appliances, custom cabinetry, mm -hmm. expansive countertops. Oh, yeah. Um, They're, you know, like, yeah. they could have just said a gas range, but they said a professional grade wolf range. You know. That does something different. They're appealing to a certain type of buyer. You know what I mean? Right? Someone who wants to feel like they are a chef. Yeah. You know, they're creating that aspiration. It's like this idea of like culinary creativity. Yeah. Like you can just. You can just picture yourself whipping up these like gourmet meals. Yeah. For your friends and family. Right. And it's interesting yeah. because when I was house hunting, I'm, huh. I was completely swayed by a Viking range. Oh. Uh, I'm not even like a serious cook at all. Yeah. But there was just something about it. There's something about it. That felt so luxurious. Right. It's like a status symbol almost, you know. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. moving on from the kitchen, which I could stay there all day, yeah. but we also have to talk about the dining spaces. Right. And yeah. again, they're appealing to a bunch of different preferences because they have the formal dining room yeah. for those memorable dinners, mm -hmm. but they also have the casual island in the kitchen. Right. That's what I was saying. Like, the open concept kitchen is so popular these days. Yeah. Because you can... You know, entertain. You can be cooking while people are hanging out. Yeah, it's much more casual. Right, and it's like yeah. you can do both. You can do both. You can have like a casual breakfast at the island, but then right. if you want to have like a fancy Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> you can bust out the dining room. And I think this whole listing really plays up the idea of a home as like a sanctuary. Oh, like a place to escape from the outside world. Absolutely. And that theme continues as we move into the primary suite. Oh, yeah, the primary suite, yeah. This is where they're really leaning into the luxury angle. Mm -hmm. They describe it as spacious and serene, mm -hmm. king-size bed walk-in closet. Oh, nice. Spa-like amenities. Oh, yeah. You're really selling that, like, self-care angle there. Yeah, like, this is a place where you can yeah. really relax and rejuvenate. Absolutely. Like, escape the stresses of the world. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just the primary bedroom. Right? Yeah. What about the other bedrooms? The secondary bedrooms? Mm -hmm. They don't skimp there either. Right. They're still talking about generously sized rooms with lots of natural light. Yeah. And they even suggest using them as a hobby room or a home office. I think that's smart, you know? Yeah. Because families change over time, you know? Right. Kids grow up. Yeah. You know, maybe somebody needs to work from home. Yeah. You need that flexibility. Yeah. And it's interesting because that ties into yeah. kind of a question that I wanted to ask you about, 
you know, what you think is more important in a home. Mm. Is it having dedicated spaces for specific things? Yeah. Or having that flexibility where rooms can kind of evolve over time? That's a tough one. You know, it's it's tough to say what's more important because I think yeah. it really depends on your individual needs and your lifestyle. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. some people really like having, you know, a dedicated office space. Yeah. And that's important for them to have that separation. Right. And other people, they like to be more flexible. They like to have a room that can be, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. a guest room when they have guests, but also an office when they need it. Yeah. I think it really comes down to personal preference. Absolutely. Okay. Let's move outside now to the backyard. Okay. They describe this as a beautifully landscaped oasis. Ooh, nice. Perfect for alfresco dining and summer barbecues. You know, when I read that, I imagine like string lights and like a nice patio set and a fire pit. Totally. It's like they're selling a mini vacation in your own backyard. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, you know, when you think about outdoor space, mm-hmm. what's more important to you? Is it having like a big lawn yeah. for activities and stuff? Or is it having like a cozy patio yeah. where you can just relax? I'm definitely more of a cozy patio person, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. You know, I like to have a place where I can just relax and unwind yeah. and maybe like read a book or have some coffee in the morning. Yeah. I don't need a ton of space. You know what I mean? That makes sense. I'm not like playing football in my backyard or anything. It's totally. So finally, they wrap up the listing right. talking about, you know, all the standard real estate stuff like the excellent schools, yeah. the parks, the shopping, the, the dining options. Mm-hmm. But I feel like even that plays a role. Oh, yeah, Definitely. Because it's all about creating that picture of the lifestyle. Yeah. You know, if you live in this house, you're going to have access to all these great things. You're going to be part of this community. It's all part of the package. All part of the package. Exactly. So we've really gone beyond just like reading a list of features here. We have. We've talked about how language is used to sell a feeling. A feeling. Yeah. An aspiration. An aspiration. Whole lifestyle. Yeah. It's pretty powerful. It is. It is. It's amazing what you can do with words. Right. You know. And I think that's something that we can all take away from this Mm -hmm. is that, you know, when we're thinking about our own homes, Mm, whether it's a luxury home or just like a cozy little apartment. Right. You know, the way we describe it says a lot about what we want. It really does. And what we value. And I think that's a great thing for everyone to think about, like, what does your ideal home say about you? You know, what kind of feeling do you want to evoke when people walk into your space? That is something to think about. Yeah, it is. So that's it for a deep dive today. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.